The Rose Window became something of a visual theme for the Choral Society, as well as a constant joy to those who got to perform in its light. The new accompanist for Paul Calloway in 1978 was J. Riley Lewis. It is an abstract window. It doesn't, it isn't anything that, that you can immediately identify. It's just, a, as I say, a blaze of colors which changes by the second, and particularly when the sun is filtering through. And as I, when I think about how singing this music, listening to this music is a personal experience and it means something different to every individual, I think looking at that rose window must feed everyone on an individual basis too. In the fall of 1981, Paul Calloway and his assistant, Riley Lewis, began rehearsing for the Mahler Eighth Symphony. Its eight soloists had all sung early in their careers with Calloway. Five were now with the Metropolitan Opera. The Eighth Symphony is called the Symphony of a Thousand because that's about how many performers it requires. This day, 700 musicians performed Mahler's masterwork in the grand space it deserved. This performance had another significance. Although Paul Calloway would not retire for three more years, this was the 40th anniversary season of the Choral Society. At various keyboards were four musicians Calloway had influenced, Wayne Dirksen, Dirksen's successor, Douglas Major, Riley Lewis, and Norman Scribner. Well, all of us that participated in that 1981 performance, which was the last performance of the uh, Mahler uh, Eighth that uh, Paul did, I believe, uh, did feel uh, a kind of summing up of Paul's career there because so much that had been close to him was gathered in one place at one time. One of Callaway's keyboardists for the Mahler would succeed him his assistant, Riley Lewis. And I remember very well the uh, particular rehearsal where they announced the, um, the successor. And uh, I, yeah, how do you put that in words? I, I just about passed out, I guess. I, I, uh, it was too good to be true. Of course, I used to joke to people that the reason I was the chosen successor is I was the only one small enough to fit in Dr. Calloway's robe. There have been changes in Riley Lewis's choral society. My very first year we did, for instance, the Janáček Glagolitic Mass in Old Church Slavonic. A couple of years ago we did a tribute to the millennium of Christianity in, in Russia, sung entirely in Russian. And here was just one other example of how music transcends all of the economic and the political and the, all of the various boundaries that are normally set up. Other conductors have brought their singers to join the Choral Society. In the summer, we have, we've been having this tradition for quite a few years now, the Summer Chorus, which allows some of our singers and singers from other churches around the community to present a concert in the Washington Cathedral. And that is another way in which we can bring people closer to what we're doing up here. The metropolitan area uh, and all of the surrounding suburban areas uh, in Maryland and Virginia uh, have so many really quite distinguished choral societies that if you added up all the people that sing in all those, it, I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if, you, if this wasn't in fact the choral capital of the country. It really is astounding when I think about the commitment level of the people in this chorus. And you could just see in their faces that it's important to them that they want to be here. It helps me understand that some of the things that we th worry about here in Washington, tomorrow's headlines or yesterday's scandals, are just totally irrelevant in the scheme of things. You don't usually get to, to express all of these, these very intense feelings in, in everyday life. And the music allows you to do that. 
choral singing is a necessity to me. It's something which uh, I really cannot live without. On September 29, 1990, the final stone was placed on the cathedral after 83 years of construction. I would love to see the entire country discover this cathedral as America's resource, refuge, and reminder somewhere to strengthen the nation's heart. From where we now stand, the rose window high above seems black and formless to some, perhaps, but when we enter and see it backlit by the sun, it dazzles in astonishing splendor and reminds us that without faith, we too are but stained glass windows in the dark. One year later, the Cathedral Choral Society opened its 50th anniversary season with the appearance of a guest conductor. Paul Calloway came out of retirement to give the first downbeat of the 50th anniversary celebration of the chorus, which he had founded in 1941. And it was really exciting. And he had lost none of his energy and, and none of his wit and, and none of his temper. It was just like old times. For me personally, it was, uh, it was a very, very moving moment, both in the rehearsals and in the concert. And then to turn around and see the entire cathedral on their feet, acknowledging to this man uh, his wonderful gift to the community. There is a musical vitality in Washington in 1992. The cathedral and the Cathedral Choral Society have contributed to that vitality. With the final stone now in place, the Washington National Cathedral itself has become a sort of cornerstone for a choral city which has come of age.